Hey guys, welcome to another video. My name is Ian, I'm Ian the Reader, and today I have a reading vlog for you. Now this is a little bit different for me. So I've done reading vlogs before and I'm working on other reading vlogs that I have announced and I've talked about in my TBRs or just in my reading plan videos or things like that. But the thing with this reading vlog is that I can't do that and here's why. So tell me if this situation sounds familiar to you. You're walking around a bookstore and you pull a book off the shelf and it has a really great title or a really great cover. And you're like, okay, what's this book about? You open the book, you read the flap or you read the back of the book and it sounds so interesting. The premise sounds amazing. It sounds right up your alley and you're like, I think I'm gonna get this book. But then you pull up Goodreads and the ratings are just not there. Maybe it's like got a 3.5, maybe it's got less than a 3.5 or a little more. Or you see a review by somebody's opinions that you respect and you decide that this book is no longer for you. I have done this so many times. I'll be walking through a bookstore, I'll pick something up and I'll be totally sold on it. And then I look on Goodreads and I no longer have any interest because the numbers just aren't there. The problem with this is that reading is subjective. It is, you know, a book that you absolutely love could be somebody's least favorite book or a lot of people's least favorite books or a book that everybody else seems to adore, you could pick up and absolutely hate. That's reading, you know, it's all about your personal tastes and opinions. And so I love Goodreads, don't get me wrong, but it's turned me off to a lot of books that I may have absolutely loved. I actually went and I looked and some of my favorite books of all time fall beneath four stars, which on Goodreads, typically means that I won't pick it up. And I don't wanna do that all the time. You know, I mean, I think it's good in some instances because maybe there's some content that you wouldn't wanna read or things like that, but I don't want to let Goodreads ratings dictate what I read anymore. I say that, but I'm probably gonna keep using Goodreads because I like it and it helps me keep track of what I read. But that being said, in this reading vlog, I'm gonna be reading four books that I have never heard of, that I have no idea how people feel about, and that I have not checked out on Goodreads. Those books are books that I stumbled upon in bookstores. One book in particular, somebody did recommend to me, but it was just like some stranger. I was looking at a fantasy book and he's like, hey, I like that book too, you should try this one. But I know nothing else about it. Um, and the goal with this is for me to just read a book again without having all these expectations of it, you know? Because when you read reviews, you hear people rave about books, your expectations are altered. And I wanna just experience a book unfiltered, unaltered, just really perceive it how I perceive it and then go back and see what everybody else thinks. I think I'm gonna do this a few more times as well, um, but the thing with it is that I'm not gonna announce what books that I'm gonna be reading in my TBR videos, because with that, then people might comment and say, oh, I love that book, or oh, I hated that book, and I literally wanna know nothing about these books except what is on the cover, what is on the flaps, and then I just wanna read it for myself. So, without further ado, let's jump into the four books that I'm planning on reading for this reading vlog. The first of those is called Stone Arabia by Dana Spiata. The cover really got me on this one. I saw the spine, I was like, hmm, that looks interesting. I've never heard of this author, I've never heard of this book, um, but I'm really intrigued. I'm gonna go ahead and read the descriptions that are on the books for these. That way you guys can go ahead and see like what I saw and kind of understand what about these books drew me to them. So here's the summary for Stone Arabia. In the sibling relationship, there are no first impressions, no seductions, no getting to know each other, says Denise Cran. Is. For her and her brother Nick, now in their 40s, no relationship is more significant. They grew up in Los Angeles in the late 70s and early 80s. Nick was always the artist, always wrote music, always had a band. Now he makes his art in private, obsessively documenting the work, but never testing it in the world. Denise remains Nick's most passionate and acute audience, sometimes his only audience. She is also her family's first defense against the world's fragility. Friends die, their mother's memory and mind unravel, and the news of global catastrophe and individual tragedy haunts Denise. When her daughter Ada decides to make a film about Nick, everyone's vulnerability seems to escalate. So that is the description of Stone Arabia from the inside flap. What really draws me to this book is the sibling relationship and the family dynamics. I love stories with really good family relationships in them. And also just the fact that uh, the characters are artists and like musical and you know artistic and they love to write. Those are things I really like in books as well. This is not too long, so I think I should get through this one pretty quickly. I think I might pick this one up first, we'll see. But the premise has me really intrigued and I'm really excited to see where this one goes. Next up is one that I picked up solely because of the cover, but then I read the back and it sounded so interesting. And that is called Not Even Bones by Rebecca Schaefer. So I didn't realize when I was picking this up that it's a YA book, but on the back it does say that it's published by like a YA publishing company. I can't remember where it says that, but it does say it here somewhere. Um, but still, the premise of this sounds really interesting. Let me go ahead and read that. 
Nita doesn't murder supernatural beings and sell their body parts on the internet. Her mother does that. Nita just dissects the bodies after they've been acquired, until her mom brings home a live specimen and orders Nita to start cutting off pieces. Dissecting a teenage boy who won't stop begging for help is a step too far. Nita wants out. But when she decides to save her mother's victim, she ends up sold in his place because Nita herself isn't exactly human. She has the ability to alter her biology, an ability that is priceless on the black market. Locked in a cage of her own, she struggles to escape, and to do that, Nita must ask herself if she's willing to become the worst kind of monster. That sounds wild, and I am totally here for it. Again, this book isn't too long either, it's like 340 pages, so I'll probably read this one soon. I am so hyped about this one. There's also a sequel to it called Only Ashes Remain. I can't believe I've never heard of this though, because it sounds really, really interesting. Hopefully it's good, I'm hopeful. Next up is one that I saw on clearance at my local bookstore recently, and that is called The Gargoyle, and it is by Andrew Davidson. Now, based on the description, it sounds kind of like a historical fiction book, but it's also set in modern day, so I'm gonna go ahead and read this, and you guys will have to tell me what you think. Uh, the Gargoyle, the mesmerizing story of one man's descent into personal hell and his quest for salvation. On a dark road in the middle of the night, a car plunges into a ravine. The driver survives the crash, but his injuries confine him to a hospital burn unit. There, the mysterious Marianne Ingalls, a sculptress of grotesques, enters his life. She insists they were lovers in medieval Germany when he was a mercenary, and she was a scribe in the monastery of Englethal. As she spins the story of their past lives together, the man's disbelief falters. Soon, even the impossible can no longer be dismissed. So this sounds really interesting. I like the cover of it. That's what first drew me to it, and just the title. Um, and yeah, I really don't know what to expect from this one. It kind of seems like there could be like, you know, just like romance vibes in it. So I'm not sure about that, but the premise is really intriguing to me. Um, so I'm not sure when I'll pick this one up. It's kind of like a bit longer. It's about 500 pages. Um, but yeah, we'll see how that one goes. And the last book is one that was recommended to me by a random person in a bookstore. He said that he really liked the series. So this is the only one that sort of doesn't fit the rest of the description of this video, but I have never heard of it other than that. I've never seen an actual review for it. He just said that he liked it. Um, basically, I was looking at another book, maybe it was The Dresden Files or something like that, and we got to talking about that, and he's like, you know, you should try this series I really like, and I was like, okay, sure, and I just bought the first book. And that book is The Magic of Recluse by L.E. Modisit. Junior, maybe that's how you say it. Um, yeah, so this is a really long series. There were a ton of books there. He told me it was really long. Um, and I have no idea, I've never heard of this, which is kind of crazy because I typically watch a lot of fantasy booktubers and keep up with a lot of fantasy people on like Goodreads and Instagram and stuff like that, but I've literally never heard of this. So we'll see how it goes. Um, there's not even actually a description on the back of it. So I don't know what this book is about, um, but it's got this this cover on it. You got horses, you got a carriage. Um, that's all I know. I have, okay, so that, that wins me extra points and that I literally have no idea what this book is about. There you go. So those are the four books that I'm planning on picking up for this reading vlog. How I wanna do this is I want to read one book at a time and then at the end of it, I'll kind of recap my thoughts to you guys and I'm gonna guess what the rating for it is on Goodreads, and then I'm gonna go check and react to that with you guys. So yeah, that's the video plan. We'll see how this goes. I'll check in with you guys later. I'm gonna go and start my first book. Alrighty guys, it is a day. Uh, I don't know what day it is. It's Saturday, that's all that matters. And I've started my first book, Stone Arabia by Dana Spiata. I'm actually over halfway through this book already because it's actually really short. And I'm loving it, actually. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's 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 different than what I expected, but it really is just like hitting me in all the right ways. Um, I really like just how introspective it is. It's not plot driven by any means. So it follows this brother and sister who kind of are at a point in their lives where they're really reflecting a lot, um, or at least the main character is. It's from the sister's perspective and she's just very introspective. She has a lot of issues to be honest like she's kind of a hypochondriac she worries all the time and she really just is struggling with art and like how she kind of sees herself in art and also just like in the media and things like that like she relates to it and she finds herself feeling more deeply for things she hears about other people than she does in her own life um and it's just very interesting all the things that this book is saying i i want to see where it's going before i really like solidify my opinions and my thoughts on it but this is a really great book so far. I think it's so well written. 
And I think like the struggles that she is facing are very relatable, just, you know, with the intense amounts of like media and, you know, exposure to other people's experiences that we get nowadays with the news and, you know, with social media and things like that. Um, in, in some ways we're numb to a lot of things, but in other ways, like there's just so much overexposure, you know, like it's so much all the time that it can be overwhelming. Um, and I think it's just very relatable and I'm, I'm really enjoying it. So I'm very curious to see what other people think of it. It's definitely not plot driven by any means. And so I can see people maybe not being so into it, but I like it. I like it a lot. So I'm very excited to finish it. I'll probably finish it today. Uh, cause I, like I said, I have less than half of it left and it's really good. I also just like kind of the whole view of like art and writing and like kind of how we see ourselves. So the brother in this, he is kind of strange in that like he's very eclectic, he's very artsy and he like does that, he writes this thing called the Chronicle, which is him literally just like writing about himself. He writes about his experiences, but in a way that like he acts like he creates these personas of himself of like being a reviewer, reviewing his own works or, or things like that and chronicling his own life. And it's very skewed, like the perspective, um, you know, that he has on himself and on other people. He even goes so far as to like make, he's kind of out there, um, but he like writes letters for his like thing that are from his sister's perspective. And he kind of like emulates her in these letters and it's kind of confusing because you, you don't know which parts are like the letters that he's written and are like not factual and what parts are actually her perspective. And so it's just interesting to kind of see the, the parallels between the two when it's revealed. And um, I mean, I have a lot of thoughts on this book, so I'm really excited to see where it goes from here. Um, after this, I think I'm probably gonna go ahead and start the Gargoyle uh, just cause it's kind of long. The Gargoyle and um, the Magic of Recluse are longer. Um, I found them both on audiobook and I think they're like 19 hours each, so I need to get started on those. Um, and then I'll save Not Even the Bones, for, or Not Even Bones for last, since it's pretty short too. But Stone Arabia is going really well, better than I expected, and I'm really excited to finalize my thoughts on it. Quick little side note, I keep being tempted, like not even tempted, but like I keep having the impulse to like get on Goodreads and update my reading status because I do that as I read books, like just to track my percentage mark. Uh, yeah, I keep having the tendency and like the urge to get on there and log where I'm at in the book, but I can't do that because then I would see reviews or like the star average rating and that would defeat the purpose. So yeah, that kind of reveals it about myself that I'm so impulsive with it that I just like feel the urge to do it every time I'm reading. Um, but this is going to be really interesting. So I'm excited to find out what it's rated at. Um, yeah, so I, I want to get through these pretty quick. We'll see how that goes, though. Alrighty, guys. I did it. I finished my first one. Stony Arabia is done. I actually finished it in less than 24 hours after starting. So that is a good sign. And... I loved this book. It was really, really, really good. It was super well written. Um, there were a lot of moments where like the narrator would say something, like the main character would say something, and I would just like sit there and like be stunned by how I felt about it and like how relatable it felt. This book really talks about like art and like, you know, what art is and what it means to people and kind of observes like art for the sake of art versus art for the sake of an audience. Um, it also kind of talks about like how <clears throat> we really like can empathize really strongly with things we see in the news sometimes, but then things happen in our lives and we're unfazed by them and vice versa. Um, and just kind of talks about how like the intense, like overflowing amounts of like exposure we get to the media kind of alter our perception of life and things like that. And there were just a lot of things that were discussed in this book that I was really like blown away by. Um, it's definitely not plot driven, like I said earlier, and so I don't think it's for everybody, but it really worked for me uh, across the board, honestly. I liked the characters, I liked kind of the struggles that they face and things like that. And it's also just a very introspective novel because, you know, it's really about a woman like contemplating her life and her decisions and, you know, where she went wrong and where she's gonna go next and her relationship with her brother. I thought the sibling dynamic was so, so well done in this. It's very honest. It's very raw. I will definitely be picking up another book by uh, Dana Spiata or however you say her name, but I'm curious to see where this lands on Goodreads. So for me, I'm going to go with a 4.5 right now, honestly, 
the longer that I think about this book, because I just finished it yesterday and I read it really quickly, so I want to let it sit with me for a little bit, but I could honestly raise it to a five star because I can't think of anything wrong with it, and it really impressed me and moved me. Um, so it could be a five, honestly, but for now I'm going to go with a 4.5. I don't think it's going to be that high on Goodreads. I think, honestly, because of the fact that it's not very plot-driven and the ending is a little bit ambiguous, I guess, I don't think this is going to be super highly rated on Goodreads. I'm going to guess... I'm going to guess it has like a 3.7. I think what I'm going to do with this also is I'm going to go ahead and like, I'm going to guess what I think it is and then I'm going to check it out. And then if it's within 0.3 of what my guess is, then I'm going to give myself a point. It doesn't have to be exact. And I think like 0.5 is too much of a variance. But if it's within 0.3 of what my guess was, then I get a point. Let's go ahead and see how close I was. I have Goodreads pulled up and I'm going to go ahead and just put a screenshot of it on uh on the page so you guys can see what i see but i have my laptop right here and i am on goodreads so i'm about to look up how this is so let's see uh, here it is all right dana spiata i my guess is 3.7 let's see whoa <laughs> that is way lower than i thought it was going to be so it is a 3.38 and there's really not a lot of ratings on here. Um, it only has 2,984 reviews, or ratings, and only 468 reviews. Wow. I am, wow, I am shocked. Like, did not see that coming at all. Um, I mean, I knew it would be lower because of the fact that, like, it's not plot-driven, but I didn't think it would be that low. This is kind of surprising because it's the first one that I did for this challenge. I loved it, and it has a, honestly like a really low rating on Goodreads. A three point three eight is low, um, in my opinion. Like, and the the honest fact is like, if I had looked this up on Goodreads before I bought it, I probably wouldn't have bought it, and I probably never would have read it. Which is crazy because I loved it. So the experiment worked, guys. This is a sign, you know, because this is a book I wouldn't have read. And it is one of the best books I've read in months. And that's crazy. Okay, so, wow, I'm really excited to see how the other books go now because, wow, this is just shocking. Okay, I, yeah, okay, so this is good. This is good. Um, this is, you know, teaching me that I need to stop looking at Goodreads so much. So, okay, uh, 3.38 for Stone Arabia. I don't get the point, barely though, because I said 3.7. If it had been up 0 0.02 more, I would have gotten the point, but... No point for me. Oh man, I still can't believe it's so low. Um, yeah, but I love this book, so take that as my review. I don't I don't agree with Goodreads on this one. I think it is much better than a 3.38. I give it a 4.5. I stand by that, and I might even lift it up to a 5. So I'm just so amazed that that actually happened. So I'm very interested to see how the next ones go. Speaking of updates, um, I've started reading Not Even Bones, and I'm enjoying it. I've only read the first, like, 15 pages, um, but it's off to an interesting start. I guess it's just kind of strange because I didn't expect the narrator to be so like excited about dissecting people because like the way that it talks about it on the back is like that she doesn't want to do it or maybe like that changes, but right now she's like super excited about like the different things and people or like creatures she gets to dissect. Um, so that's a little creepy, but it's off to a very compelling start. I'm very interested to see where it goes. I have also been listening to The Gargoyle, um, which I'm enjoying. It's a little bit disturbing. So um, at the start of the book, the the main character is in not a good spot. He gets in a terrible car accident and is terribly, terribly injured. He has burns all over his body. Um, he talks about certain parts of him that have burned off, the, the certain parts being very um, intimate. <laughs> And he's also lost like toes and an epitracheotomy, so he's not in a good spot. Um, but even before that, it's interesting because he was definitely like in a not a good place. He was addicted to drugs. He was in the adult film industry for his job, and like he just didn't have a lot of genuine connection with anyone. And now this stranger has popped up, and he's very drawn to her. And I'm very interested to see where it goes. That being said. Uh, the cover for the audiobook is different than this cover. I like this cover. If I had seen this cover, the cover for the audiobook, 
I probably not would not have picked it up either. Um, so we'll see. Um, I'm gonna try not to judge that too harshly. Um, and we'll just go from there. So yeah, that's my update. Book one done and no points awarded, but this has been a good experience already. So we'll see where it goes. From. Check in later. same spot it is now like three days later it's Tuesday and I finished the gargoyle by Andrew Davidson I feel like this vlog is just gonna be me telling you that I finished books and then reacting to the scores I'm not really doing much right now my family and I are actually sick um, so we're just staying at home and recovering um, but yeah I finished the gargoyle and I finished it pretty quick because um, it's pretty long and I finished it in like three days and it was really good too. Um, so this has been really interesting. The fact that I randomly picked these books up just based on the premise and I'm loving them. Um, it's really exciting that I'm loving them. So The Gargoyle is really like, honestly, it reminds me of Beauty and the Beast in a lot of ways because it's about this guy who is an unnamed narrator and I didn't really realize it until like halfway through. I was like, wait, what the heck is this guy's name? And it never says it, um, but basically, this guy um, is living a life of loneliness um, and just, you know, he's not in the greatest situation. He has no friends. He is in the adult film industry and he just doesn't have a lot of personal connections with people. Um, it's a job he didn't ever picture himself in, but he ended up in there just due to his life's misfortunes and things like that. He's also addicted to drugs. He does cocaine a lot and he's an alcoholic as well. And he gets in this terrible car accident at the beginning of the book and barely survives. He is terribly burned all over his body and um yeah he's just recovering um and this woman shows up and she says well the, they have this connection and she basically tells him that you know they're meant to be together and they have this long history that dates back to like the 1300s and he thinks she's crazy and throughout the story you get their past story allegedly um, and you also get a lot of other stories as well. Like that's one of the things I loved about this book was the story within a story aspect. Throughout you get like four or five smaller stories and normally that kind of takes me out of my reading experience and I don't love it. Uh, but I really enjoyed each of the stories that were told here. I thought it was really, really well done, really well written. Um, and it's just kind of about this guy struggling with himself and his own worth and you know, this inner voice that just tears him down um and it deals with you know his relationship with marianne engel who is the woman um and it's just there's so much that this book does and it's funny because in some ways i found this book to be really predictable but in other ways i found it to be really unpredictable um and that's so funny isn't it how like a book can simultaneously be both there were certainly some aspects of it and beats of the story that i was like okay this is gonna happen next and then this is gonna happen and that did happen but I still found myself really surprised at what this book did a lot. Um, and so I really recommend it, honestly. I thought it was really good. There's a bit of, you know, like adult content um, if that bothers you. It's not like intense and it's very brief and it's just about his past, um, but it's not really like delved in too deeply. It's just kind of there. Um, it's really everything after, because the accident happens on page one uh, and it kind of just goes from there and it covers a few years and this book was really beautiful honestly um it was a beautiful story it was very moving it was very heartbreaking at times and yeah i really really enjoyed it i don't know if i'll give it five stars but again this is another 4.5 and if it sits with me i may raise it up to five i kind of do that sometimes a book will absolutely blow me away and like it's an immediate five star and then other ones like i really really enjoyed and i feel like a 4.5 and then dependent upon how they stick with me over the coming months, I can occasionally raise them to five stars. It just kind of depends. And so this is one of those, as is Stone Arabia, that are 4.5s that could eventually become fives. Um, but this book, The Gargoyle, was really good. So if it sounds like it's interesting to you, you should totally pick it up because it was really mysterious, um, really beautiful, really moving, and I enjoyed myself a lot while reading it. Now the Goodreads score. So I think that this one is definitely gonna have a higher score than Stone Arabia. 
Um, if I had to guess, I think that there are a lot of things about this story that are what people are looking for in a book. Um, like I said, it doesn't necessarily surprise at all points of the story. And so I think some people might have an issue with kind of the formulaicness of it. But there are some aspects of the story that are very unique to this book. And so, honestly, I'm thinking it places around a four. Maybe a little higher. I'm going to go, my guess for the Goodreads score is a 4.07. That's my guess. So I've got Goodreads pulled up right here. I'm going to go ahead and look it up. Here we go by Andrew Davidson. My guess is 4.07. Let's see how it goes. Okay. Okay. Um... So I was a little bit off, but not by a lot. I was off by 0.15. So the actual score for the Gargoyle is a 3.92, which is about where I thought it was going to be. Really, I thought it was like going to be at a 4, typically, but like I went a little higher just because that's what I thought. But I'm not surprised by this score at all. This place is about where I thought it was going to. So I probably would have picked it up. Um, I don't, like I said, I don't like the cover. Even though it fits with the story, I don't like the cover of the one that's advertised on Goodreads. So if I had looked it up, I probably wouldn't have read it just because of the cover. But this cover is a lot different, a lot more subdued, and it's definitely more my style. Yeah, I don't know if I would have picked it up, but given the cover, I probably wouldn't have. But I'm really glad I did, because I thought this book was really good. So that's my recommendation. I would say do pick up The Gargoyle, um, and we'll see how the last two books go. But so far, this has been really enlightening. I'm enjoying it. This also means that I get a point I guess. I don't know why I'm keeping points. Is there like a number of points I need? I guess I'd like to get at least two points since I have four books. So I get one point because I was within point three of the actual score on Goodreads. Go me. Hey guys, I am making coffee because I'm exhausted and COVID is exhausting. I uh, just wanted to jump in with some thoughts really quick on Not Even Bones. Ah, it's good. Not Even Bones is just kind of meh, honestly. Like, it's middle of the road. It's not bad, but it's not really good. Like, I like the premise, but for some reason, I'm just having a really hard time connecting to the characters, and the story just really could have gone a lot of places, in my opinion, that it hasn't gone yet, and I'm almost done. And so I'm just a little bit frustrated because, like, I like the premise, but the story feels kind of stagnant, and it feels like you kind of get all the interesting bits early on, and then it just exists you know um and so i'm just feeling kind of meh on it not bad not great um in addition to that i'm listening to the audiobook on it i was reading it first but then i transitioned to the audiobook and one of the characters names is covit k-o-v-i-t and that's just really strange because i keep thinking they're saying covid and i'm like wait covid is a character and you know it's just kind of strange so i'm getting used to that though and i'm ready to finish this up so i'll check in soon i'm about to finish it and we're back in the same spot. I have now finished Not Even Bones, and nothing changed uh, from my thoughts earlier. It was still really middle of the road, not bad, not good. The story just didn't really go anywhere for me. I liked the setup. I liked the characters to an extent. I liked that, like, they go beyond morally gray to being, like, not good people. Um, they're messed up, honestly, the two, like, primary characters, um, particularly the main character, Nita, I mean, the the other character, Kovit, is as well. But, like, honestly, I just found, like, their kind of dynamic to be unbelievable um, and just kind of forced in some ways. I mean, in other ways it wasn't, but I don't know. Something about it just didn't sit right with me. Uh, the plot just didn't go anywhere that I really wanted it to because the setup was really interesting. You know, just this whole, it's our regular world, but then there are these kind of people with unique abilities that are very strange and, like, very, very unique. It has more to do with their anatomy um, than it does with like magic or whatever. It's just that they have specific biological abilities that are kind of strange. Um, I liked it, the setup, but the plot was just kind of bland for me. Like it kind of, uh, things happen like really quickly at the beginning and then it's just kind of the same thing over and over again the rest of the story and that just didn't really work for me. Um, in addition to that, I just felt that there was not a lot of momentum in the story. Um, like it ended and I was just like, okay, I guess that's supposed to be like a twist, but I don't feel compelled to pick up the second book in this duology. So I don't think that I will. It wasn't bad. Like I said, I'd probably give it three stars cause I enjoyed the setup and I enjoyed some aspects of the story, but the plot was just kind of meh for me. So, um, if, if the premise of this book sounded interesting to you at the end of the, at the beginning of the video, like 
give it a try. Maybe I'm just kind of the odd one out here. I'm curious to see where it lands on the Goodreads rating scale just because, you know, um, sorry if you can hear <laughs> Baby Shark in the background. My son is watching it. He's not feeling great. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to land here. So I think that this is going to have a higher rating for sure than Stone Arabia, but I don't think it's going to have as high a rating of the, as the Gargoyle, um, which was like a 3.9 something. Um, so I'm guessing, honestly, this is going to have like a 3.7, 3.7. I'm going to go with 3.7. So let's go ahead and look. My rating is three stars. Here we go. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, so I was wrong. It has the highest rating of all three books that I have read so far with a 4.17. Um, which, you know, for a YA book isn't like super high because YA books tend to trend a little bit higher than like adult fiction books. Um, but it's not bad, you know. Um, so let me check out the reviews. Not a lot of people, only one person that I'm friends with has actually read it. A couple other people have shelved it as like to read. Um, it doesn't have like a ton of reviews. It has 8,149 ratings and 1,412 reviews, which is not bad, but not like a crazy amount. Um, and yeah, 4.17, I suppose that's reasonable. You know, I can see people giving it four stars. I don't think a lot of people would give it five stars necessarily. It's kind of just your average YA story in some ways while having an interesting premise, the execution just feels kind of standard. So I'm not surprised by the rating okay actually wait it's not a duology it's three books because i see that the third book is the third book out the third book is out so it's a trilogy but i'm not really interested in, in picking this second book up honestly i mean maybe i'll surprise myself and one day i'll just be like you know i kind of want to see where that story goes but i don't feel compelled to read it of the three books that i've read so far it is my least favorite it wasn't bad like i said you know if you're into ya and the premise sounds interesting go ahead and give it a go but for me, it was just kind of okay. Um, so yeah, that means I only have one book left. That's The Magic of Recluse, which is the longest one, I believe, of all the books I have to read. And I have no idea what that one is about. So I feel like it's gonna be a little bit harder to get into, but we'll see. Um, I think I might take a break and read something else first, but I'm gonna try to finish all of these before November is over. Today is November 18th, so I have time. Um, but yeah, so that's that book. I guess 3.7 and it was at 4.17, so no points for me, which means I have to get the magic of recluse right to get a point or whatever, because that was my goal, just to get half of my guesses pretty accurate. And so, yeah, we'll see how that goes. But um, I'll try to throw some other footage in here rather than just me sitting at the same spot at my table and telling you guys about these books, but uh, no promises, because I'm not feeling too hot. All right, see ya. Okay, so I'm playing a game. That's if I kick this and it flies over there and it lands on its wheels and I get a point. Here we go. No, so close. All right, round two, here we go, here we go. Oh, shoot. So close. I suck at this. Round five, maybe? Yes! Finally! Ha ha ha! It only took me five turns. In case you had not noticed, this whole um, isolating at home thing is not fun for extroverts at all. I mean, you all know this. We've been in this pandemic for a while, but it's not fun. I want to go places and do things, but I'm just going to have to bookshop on Amazon in my car and call it going to a bookstore, I guess. The good thing is though that I feel okay right now. I felt pretty bad this morning, but now clearly I have like a little bit more energy and I just wanted to get out of the house. So but I'm grateful for that. I'm gonna be grateful because it could be a lot worse. So back to reading. Alrighty folks, it's the next day. I'm outside again, because what else is there to do? Um, I've started The Magic of Recluse and it's interesting. Um, so the whole premise is that there's this country, I guess, called Recluse and things are like divided between order and chaos rather than like good and bad necessarily and you know they want everything to kind of stay the same and be perfect they call it um, but the main character is bored like that's his whole thing is he's just bored with all of the perfection of it and all the order of it and so they basically tell him like you can either be exiled or you can go join this like group of people who go exploring in the chaotic land um and so he decides obviously not to be exiled and so he joins this group of people and as far as i can tell like he's pretty gifted 
in like magic I guess but like he doesn't really know to what extent because they're not like supposed to talk about it or something it's kind of confusing um, especially because I really don't know where the story is going or what the story is actually about um, the main character is kind of obnoxious I won't lie uh, one because he just keeps talking about how bored he is and he keeps ad admiring the female figure of a couple of his uh, co-workers or whatever the heck they are um, his co-trainees um, but other than that like it's interesting I like where the story is going I think um, and I'm interested in the world, so that's cool. And I went ahead and I did Google how many books there are in the series, and there's 20 books as of right now, um, which is pretty crazy. That's a lot. I don't know. I doubt it follows the same characters. I'm sure it probably just takes place in the same world because that's a lot of books to follow the same characters. But uh, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. But anyway, I'll check in in a bit. Hope you guys are doing really great. product to my store just trying to help out even though I can't work right now um and I just finished the audiobook for The Magic of Recluse by L.E. Modisit Jr. however you say his name and I have some thoughts so I liked it um it was not my favorite book that I've read for this challenge um but I liked it uh so a little bit about it it's it's kind of strangely formatted to be honest because in some ways, it seems like the classic hero's journey, and to a certain extent, I suppose it is. But the structure is a little bit odd because you don't really find out about the world and kind of the magic system and all that until like over halfway through the book. Um, so the magic system is kind of secretive because of the fact that wizards are really not trusted um in this society but there's like three different types of wizards there's the black wizards the white wizards and the gray wizards the white wizards are the chaotic ones the ones that just do whatever the heck they want with their magic without any care for order or whether or not things should be done they just are very prideful and arrogant and yeah they they thrive on chaos and then there's the black wizards um which are the opposite they're driven by order and everything they do with their magic has to be in alignment with you know the natural order of things and so they have a lot more restrictions on their magic but ultimately they are in some ways more powerful um and then gray wizards are ones that don't necessarily align with either the chaotic or the order side they kind of just start in the middle and you know they're kind of neutral so in some ways it kind of reminds me of like D and D a little bit because like you've got kind of like chaotic characters and neutral characters and lawful good kind of characters um so it kind of reminds me of that and i liked the way that it was very much like a morality thing that played into their magical abilities rather than just like you're gifted you know or whatever and so you're super powerful like the things that they believe impact their ability to perform magic, which I thought was really nice. I thought it was really good. Um, yeah, so I enjoyed that. Um, in some ways, it kind of reminded me of The Name of the Wind, um, but I'm not a big fan of The Name of the Wind, but I did like this. Um, and part of that's just because the main character kind of remind, reminded me of Kavoth a little bit, um, but in a way that was much more enjoyable because he kind of like goes through the process of like being outside of magic and then kind of going into this magical system and being gifted in it um in kind of a surprising way just like Kavoth is but I really liked that you don't get the other end of it because one of my least favorite things about like Kavoth as a character is the fact that you're constantly hearing about how amazing he is and all that jazz but with this character he's much more humble um and he just doesn't really know what he's doing <laughs> a lot of the time which i enjoyed i thought it was a lot more endearing um things i didn't like i didn't like the pacing of it in the like first and it was just kind of weird like the way you didn't really know what was going on um and part of it again was that i went into this book completely blind but like you don't find out details about the magic system or the world or even like the character's background a little bit until way later in the book and so it was just kind of hard to track with like okay what matters here what do i need to keep track of what's important what's not um so that was a little confusing and then i didn't like the way that like literally every time the main character came into contact with a person who was a female he had to comment on how shapely they were you know even if it's like a young person he'd be like oh the first hints of their shapely curves were beginning to show and i'm like dude is it necessary 
no. It was not perfect by any means. I wouldn't even say it was great. I would say it was pretty dang good though. Um, so for this book, for The Magic of Recluse, I'm gonna go ahead and give it four stars. Yeah, four stars. That sounds pretty good. Um, but that's it. I did it. I finished all four of the books. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut to me checking out the Goodreads score. Let's see how I did. Okay, so I'm about to look it up. I'm on Goodreads. One thing I wanted to say is that I'm giving this book four stars, but it's like a light four in that, like, I just finished it today. But, like, two days from now, I wouldn't be surprised if I maybe lower it to a 3.5. Like, honestly, it's probably closer to, like, a 3.75, but that feels too specific. So... We'll see how it sits in my brain, but I think it's probably gonna be at about a four, honestly. So I'm just gonna make that my guess is four. If anything, I think it might be a little bit lower, but we'll see. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and look it up. Here we go. And let's see what it is. Oh my gosh, it's a 3.85, which actually I almost guessed a 3.85. If I had guessed it on the money, that would have been crazy, but I am still within 0.15 of it, so I get a point, which means I accomplished my goal of getting two of them right, so heck yeah. But that is it for this reading vlog. I hope you guys had fun with it. I really did, honestly. I feel like I've learned something and I've really taken something away from this experiment, and that is, it's nice to be surprised by books again, you know? Because I feel like, to a certain extent, you know, like some books can still surprise you just because you don't know the specifics of what's gonna happen. But just entering a book again without having any idea how good it's supposed to be or really like what's gonna happen in the story because I haven't read any reviews like honestly it was really nice you know it felt refreshing it felt exciting and I haven't felt that kind of feeling from reading a book in you know years and don't get me wrong like I said I love Goodreads I'm still gonna use it um but yeah I mean I think I'm gonna do this more often I can't decide if I'm gonna do like more reading vlogs like this or if I just want to include like one like surprise blind book uh, every month on my TBR. Like say, this is gonna be my blind book of the month. I'm not gonna look up reviews, I'm just gonna read it. And that way I can kind of just experience it in an ongoing way. I think I'll probably do that. But let me know if you think I should do more vlogs like this. I have a lot of other vlog plans, so I'll probably do that instead. Um, just do other vlogs and then just every month do like a blind book just to continue this experience. I really enjoyed it. Let me know if any of these books now sound interesting to you. I do recommend all of them actually, um, some more than others. I'd say my favorite of all of them was probably Stone Arabia, which is really funny because it had the lowest rating. Um, but you know, they were all pretty good. So I recommend all of them. But that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. Make sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell and stick around because I post videos every Tuesday and Friday and sometimes on the weekends too if I feel like it. Don't be a stranger and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.